I'm Delta Work, and it's time for a very Delta. She's livid, and I'm living. Margaret Cho is here. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who loves the cool-down portion of physical exercise. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. Go off Delta! I have this neighbor who... I, I would say that she remains nameless because I'm trying to protect her uh, her her person, but I literally don't know her name. I, I don't even know what unit she lives in in my building, but she parks next to me and she's always parked next to me, uh, at, at least for a few years. Her driver door goes to my passenger door. And at least three to four times a week, she opens up her coffee or something else, but generally it's coffee, and just pours it in the carport next to the car. Like literally in the spot where she's going to have to step out and someone is going to have to step in or step out of my passenger door. And I think it is just disgusting. I think it's foul. I think it is sloppy. I think it is disgraceful. I think it is uh, ignorant. I think it's intentional. I think um, I think we have a problem. And I, I think there's a time and a place to uh, pour you know water or something out of your car. I think that I don't think that's a problem. I, but I do think it's an issue when you're purposely doing that in a space that other people are using for normal traction walking around. For instance, if you have a water bottle, Maybe you have a, a refillable bottle that you just carry with you throughout the day and it's got a little water in it and you are leaving your car and you're going to go back in the house. Obviously, you should dump that out in your sink. But if you pour it out on the asphalt in a parking lot, I feel like that's going to be OK. It's just water. It's going to absorb into the asphalt. It's going to go away. No one's going to think about it. There's not really going to be a smell that's going to be attributed to that. But I feel like say you have half a coffee. I think it's inappropriate to just open it up and pour it on the asphalt. I feel like you could just leave it in the cup and take that to the to a dumpster, take it to the grocery store trash can before you go in. Uh, I feel like that's how you should be handling those things. I definitely think it's inappropriate to pour it. How about this? Whatever it is that you're going to pour out, whether it's coffee or hot tea or fruit punch or soda, if it's anything other than water, I feel like it should stay in the cup and it should go in a trash can or it should be poured out into a sink. And then the, the, the container, if it's disposable, goes into the trash can. However, I don't think any of those things, water, soda, juice, any of it um, needs to be poured out on a cement surface. So where we pull up and park our cars is a cement surface, and then I walk down into asphalt, then I walk back up onto cement. This would be like, in my mind, it's the same thing as taking that coffee and just dumping it in the courtyard, just pouring it on the cement and thinking, well, that's fine because I don't want it anymore, and that's the ground and it's liquid, but not all liquids are created equally. I feel like that that coffee could attract, if there's sweetener, it could attract ants, flies, bees, bugs, Whatever. Water, again, a little bit different. I still don't want it on the cement. I mean, if she's going to pour it outside the car right next to my car, why doesn't she just walk up to my doorway, my little my little stone pathway to my unit? Why doesn't she just pour the coffee right there? She might as well because I'm going to have to step in it either way. I think it's gross. Like, I feel like it's intentional. I feel like she, maybe it's like a pissing contest or something like 
I'm just going to throw this here and I don't care. But like she obviously doesn't care about herself if she's dumping it where she's going to have to walk as well. I feel like that's foul. Like I think about things like sunflower seeds, you know, obviously if you eat a sunflower seed and you spit the shell out in a in a field or something, if you're a, a farmer or you're a, a, a cowgirl or something like that, that's par for the course. You're just going to be walking along, spitting these out in the wilderness and they're just going to, you know, they're biodegradable and they're going to go into the earth. Um, but if you're sitting in one spot, you don't just pile up sunflower seeds like in the middle of the mall and you're just like... Pfft, and you just leave it there because then it creates this unnecessary pile of trash that someone's going to have to clean up your DNA, your fucking mouth juice all over. And like, wh why is that somebody else's job to pick up? Maybe you could spit them into a cup in public and then take that cup and dump it out or something. Like I, Again, this is different if you're, like I said, a cowgirl or if you are... Um, somebody who's going to be in the wilderness or maybe you're on a road trip, like driving through the Mojave desert and you roll down your window and you're like spitting out sunflower seeds that are never really going to create a scene because one sunflower seed every, I don't know, 40 or 50 feet. Who's going to, who it's not going to matter to anything, but like piling up sunflower seeds in, in, in public. Ew. Like why, like why is that somebody, I mean, to me, it really, it's like, it's kind of like those people that go into a food court and they're like, they eat their food from, I don't know, Auntie Anne's and they sit into a big food court and then they eat what they want and then they just leave their trash there and they walk away and they're like, it's not my job. Well, were you tipping somebody to clean that up? There's, do you think there's a bus boy? You think there's a, a bus person that comes through here and, and, and does all that? Sure, there is an employee, but I mean, you're just using that space like temporarily. And it's your responsibility to the things that you took away from the, the freestanding restaurant that you ate there. You need to take them away as well. Like it's yes, there is someone that will empty the trash cans, but they shouldn't have to go bust all the tables for all of your blown out hot dogs. And I mean, we have to take ownership of this. Like it, it should be our responsibility to, to look out for ourselves, to pick up our own trash, not pour coffee all over where somebody else is parked just because you can. Just because, like, what's my right? It's not going to, who cares? Like, well, you should care. You should not be a sow. You should not be a pig. You should not be a nuisance. You should realize that we are all sharing the fucking earth. <laughs> We're all here. Like, you, is it, is it so heavy to carry that, like, half of a venti coffee into the house and, like, pour it into your sink and then put the lid back on and then put it in the trash or even... Better yet, I mean, hopefully you have like a reusable cup maybe. And if it is your reusable cup and it's going back in your house anyway, can't you just take the whole thing in there and take the lid off and pour the remains of the day into the sink and then close the lid and set it over there to be washed and then move along with your day? Why do you have to go, I need to make sure as soon as I get out of this car that I make that person next to me's day as difficult as mine was. I think there is a thing behind this too. Like I think there are people. Um, I think this is why people don't say thank you, please. And thank you when they, when someone opens a door for them or they don't smile and say, good morning. Like I think, um, you know, sure you know, stranger danger. You don't want people to know too much about you. You don't want uh, people to, uh, you don't, you don't have a responsibility to be friendly to people. Like I get it. You don't, you don't have to just because someone says, Hey, you look great. Like you don't, they maybe don't need to be saying that to you at all. And that's fine. But you know, I think what happens is people purposely blow past people and go, eh, I'm going to take this and pour it. And I don't give a fuck because they're treated so shitty in their lives that they want to take that out on someone. They want someone else to feel at least in an instance um, that, that they somehow inconvenienced you the way that you've been inconvenienced all day and the way that you've been maligned by the world. It's kind of like, fuck you. Yeah. You open the door for me and, and, I'm going to walk through. I pour my coffee wherever I want. I think there is sort of this puffed up chest, shoulder checking sort of attitude that's happened definitely over the past few years because, you know, a lot of people feel not compensated fairly at work. They feel like, you know, they're never going to be a homeowner because no matter how 
hard they build their credit. It's never going to be good enough. Uh, you know, we we all maybe feel these ways in little instances, but when you take it out on strangers by just being a slob and another like gross person in the community that shits all over everybody and shits all over space. I always want to kick that lady's ass that pours that coffee everywhere. I'm not going to. I mean, I could if I wasn't so lazy because it would involve me picking up my leg and I'm not going to do that any more than just walking and I'm doing good to put two feet in front of the other. But the reality is sometimes I just want to maybe kick her ass with my words. Not even that. Sometimes I just want to like go up and ask like, can I ask you a very serious question? Why do you pour your coffee out on the cement? Why can't you take your coffee into the house? Are you marking your territory? Are you trying to pick a fight? Are you showing dominance? Are you just flat out disgusting? Do you not know the difference between uh, cement and asphalt, a trash can and a sink? Or is it just the fact that you've always been walking through shit and you don't mind if you have to walk through shit as long as you get to force me to do it. I think there's definitely a list of things uh, that, that's appropriate to drop on the ground and have to save for a trash can. And it's definitely a, a sort of time and place situation. I feel like if you have leftover food from Olive Garden and you decide that you don't want it anymore and maybe it's been in your car all day, I think it's inappropriate to just take it out and throw it on the ground. I think that should go in a trash can. If you are eating an apple and you get halfway through or you get all the way through and you have the core and you're like, there's no trash can around here, but I am in an open field. I am, my, I am parked near an open field. I think it's okay to throw that apple into an open field where it's grassy and there's lots of plants. I think that's a time and place situation. I think it is our responsibility, regardless of how biodegradable something is, if you are in a city area where you know that even though you don't see a trash can, that there probably is a trash can that you're going to pass, whether you go into a store or into your home or into a, a doctor's office, you need to hold on to that trash and put it in a trash can or a recycle bin or whichever it, it actually goes to. I don't think there's really an appropriate time just to throw something on the ground. Again, we could be splitting hairs when we talk about sunflower seeds and, and uh, you know, spitting a sunflower seed out of a car window when you're, dri when you're driving down a country road. Okay, big deal. But if you are sitting in a parked car in a parking structure, and you're going to be sitting there for an hour, I think it's highly inappropriate to eat sunflower seeds and just spit them in a pile outside the door of your car in a parking stall where other park cars are parked. I, I think it's highly inappropriate to sit in a car for an hour and just spit sunflower seeds into a pile in a parking structure where there it's, it's, it's all cement. There are other cars. Get yourself a fucking napkin, a cup, something stop being a pig people don't give a shit people don't give a shit until it happens to them then it's a problem and they'll continue to do that behavior it's the same people that are pissed off when they go in front of target and they're like come on come on come on hurry up i've got to park my car and then they want to swerve around people and then they get into their parking spot and then suddenly as soon as they walk into target they're a pedestrian and they're like i'm gonna take my time why are you rushing me <laughs> i'm a pedestrian but well, you weren't a pedestrian a minute ago when you were trying to run everyone over that had a shopping cart. But now all of a sudden you're a pedestrian. It's like people play both sides of that. Just don't pour your coffee outside the fucking car. Just keep your coffee mug closed. Pour it out in the sink. If it's trash, if it's, it's, if it's, if it's not reusable, put it in a trash can. If you're going to put it in the trash can anyway... What is, the, what is the need to dump some of the trash out in the street and then save the part that was holding that trash for the trash can? Why are you doing both? Why can't you just not make a scene and walk by and open up the dumpster and put your coffee in there and just be on your way? There is something absolutely disgusting about a drink like coffee or hot chocolate or a, why not throw your milkshake on the ground? It's it's all the same thing. It all just looks like this viscous sort of um, 
mealy, milky, gross, not, and when it, when it dries, sure, it's going to dry, but there's going to be all this residue there where you can see it. It's not like it's going to absorb into the ground. Whatever was left there, the color, all of that is still going to be there. And there's going to be ants all over that bitch. And then it's going to become sticky. And then when, uh, you know, leaves go by they're going to get stuck on it and it's going to be gross and then it becomes a whole thing where people are like oh i don't know why our carports are so dirty all the time i don't know why it's this place looks like a dump they should really get somebody in here to clean it well they probably do have somebody come in and clean it very frequently they shouldn't have to come there every single fucking day because you're an animal the same thing can be said for people who are spitting if you're spitting all over the place you know Something projectile coming out of your mouth should be because of an emergency because, oh, I spit my coffee out because that was so funny. Pardon me. Or, oh, my gosh, I, I really feel like I'm choking. I'm choking. Oh, my gosh. And then, you know, uh, vomit comes out or, or 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 you blow a fucking booger out of your nose or something. These are emergencies. These are isolated incidents. But when you have this like just habit of just constantly spitting Again, save that for cowgirl time, save that for um, uh, you know, riding the rodeo, save that for like whatever it is that you save that, save that for hanging out on, on the job site. But you know, when you're walking in public, that's disgusting. And people know that it's disgusting because they don't do it in a restaurant. But as soon as they walk out, they'll start doing it on the ground in front of everyone else. Well, you knew at some point it was inappropriate. You knew it was inappropriate. You don't just fart at the dinner table. I mean, listen, you know, we'll always go back to it. I shit in a restaurant. However, um, it was an emergency, right? I never went back. I mean, that's the thing. If it's an emergency, it's different. But if you're just like, what is that? What is that? Why, why are you spitting all the time? I mean, listen, I know someone's going to watch this. And they're going to go, well, actually, I have a condition called, I'm sure you do. And I'm sure that that is a thing. And, I'm, and I have full respect for that. But there are people that don't have a condition that are just doing this because they, again, want to display some sort of dominance or, or it seems cool or um, they're being real or something. It, it's, a, it's okay to like not have to force this. I'm, re I'm being real. You, you can just not spit where other people are walking or other people are inhabiting at the same time. Do you want to see me take a break? I think you want to see me take a break. After the break, Margaret Cho works the house down boots. Today's guest is my queer comedy everything. She's embarking on her new live and livid tour on February 16th. Please make welcome the gorgeous, the stunning, the queer as all get out, Margaret Cho. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, so I have a, a, like a, just a general question because of the name of the tour. How live and how livid? Well, live and that I'm still alive. Okay. Barely. And uh, also just like live and that we're coming back into doing live shows mm -hmm. and livid because um, how can you not be angry? Right. What's so infuriating is that all of these uh, drag shows are under attack, and it really infuriates me. It's right. really the, the 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 I get so mad. I think they just want to go to drag shows. I think so. And they're embarrassed, so they're trying to like figure out reasons that they they can go. Right. I feel like these are two people that are like uh, sort of peaked in high school, if yes. they ever peaked at all. Yeah. And so they just want to continue a life of bullying behind something like I, right. I'm bullying in defense of the flag. I'm bullying in <sighs> defense of something. It's like you're not bullying for any other you're reason. You're not bullying than... for any. I mean, she doesn't need you. She right. does. Miss Flag doesn't need you. Miss Pronoun. Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Pronouns don't need you. <laughs> right. Right. Why, and, and why the concern? I mean, I, I was thinking the other day about like a movie like Tu Wong Fu or like mm -hmm. any of the movies that that came out that were sort of drag based when like where was the was it because there was no social media at the time there? We didn't see the people protesting or were people just not protesting because they were like, oh, I know what that is. It's not a big deal. But now they're looking for something. They were just never afraid of drag queens. Nobody's ever been afraid, which you should be afraid of drag queens if you really know what's good for you. <laughs> I mean, if you if you have not been read right. by a drag queen, you have not uh, felt terror. 
Right. But it the way that they're framing uh, the danger to children. Children are under no dangerous circumstances at a drag show. It's it that's like a new thing that they decided to put onto it. Right. But it's never been a danger, and they've never cared until now. Do you like candles? It, it yes. Do you notice, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to like Bath and Body Works yeah. or if you're that person, because I am. <laughs> yes. But like, do you notice that after the Christmas season, you can kind of tell what time of year it is based mm. on what candles are out. So right now it's all like, everything is like zen and everything's like, just center mm. yourself. So all the scents are uh, empath. And, yeah. And then it will like slowly turn into like an evening in France. Oh, yes. Right? Yes, yes. Then it's, uh, then it will be like farmer's market. Mm. And, and then, then cherry blossom. Uh-huh. And then escape to somewhere tropical. Then it's magnolia. Mag- and then it's Christmas. Uh, yeah. Then it's Christmas. Then it's pine. <laughs> then it's pumpkin and pine. And pumpkin it's over. and pine together. Right. And what do pumpkins yeah. really even smell like? I mean, I don't think they necessarily. I, think, I think there's, I, I get cinnamon, but that's just like pumpkin pie. Because we're putting it on there. I don't smell the squash. I don't either. I don't smell any of that. So I don't no. You're celebrating 40 years as a comic. Yes. What's the face of comedy from when you first started doing it to now? I mean, is there is there a thing where people are like, apologize? I, I didn't mean to say this. Like, do we feel a requirement to do that? I think it's sort of like um, we're just looking for language to be fair. And we realize that comedy has a lot of impact in society so that when people joke about things, that there is a part of that that can like um, diminish emerging communities diminish their strength so i think that's all all about sort of like the idea about cancel culture i think the impetus is noble but the practice is can can be really annoying right you know right but i like the idea of like let's just make language fair Um, because you know i'm coming from 80s comedy where it was so common to make gay jokes so common to make uh asian jokes Mm -hmm. uh any kind of like um community that wasn't sort of represented in the club was sort of fair game and that's really not fair right so i like that part but the uh the only difference really in 40 years of comedy is um i've headshots now okay (laughs) and because i didn't 40 years ago sure so when i went my first gig I went to the club and they uh, didn't have headshots for me, but they had taken a drawing of a caricature from Asian Chinese railroad workers with a long queue, the long okay. braid and buck teeth and eating a bowl of rice with chopsticks. Wow. Wow. And a, a line, a, caric- a racist caricature to promote my appearance in wow. lieu of a headshot. For this is for real. For real. And so I went into the office. I said, I don't think that uh, uh, I don't like that. And I didn't know what to do because I was 14. Right, right. <laughs> so I also wasn't sure what my uh, limits were of like, can I protest this or can I take that down? I don't even have a photo. What right. do I do? Um, they did take it down. Um, I, I just did, left it blank. But that's the sort of the mentality of seeing um, Asian people in comedy, seeing an Asian women in comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, so things have changed. I have headshots. That's important. I mean, you really don't want that. Giant. The thing is, too, like when uh, th- th- I feel like we're in a space when you're talking about like in- inclusion, we're in a space where there are people that are like, oh, it's just a joke. It's not that it's, stop being so sensitive. But it's somebody on the outset who has never experienced that mm-hmm. or understands that. And then they're like, well, you're a comic. I mean, it, you, you shouldn't you, you should just be laughing at it. It should be funny. But. It's not inviting people into that conversation. Right. And it's well, that's, it's it's really tricky. It's also the intention behind it. Like also uh, it's the um, the scope of humanity because jokes can be really dehumanizing in sure. a good way and in a bad way. But oftentimes it's in a bad way. It's taken in a bad way. And so that's like a very – it's a hard conversation. It's a very deep conversation. It's not that we're – getting offended by everything. It's more let's examine our words because we're powerful. Right. I, uh, you know, I can remember just even like something like, say, Drag Race, which we were talking about off camera. But there's still this sort of thing, um, certainly nowhere near the same as uh, anyone being maligned for uh, any ethnic group. But like 
when people put on a fat suit and they're like, wouldn't it be funny if I just did this in a fat suit? And I'm like, oh, it, okay, well, like, what, what's going to happen? Well, I'm just going to be in a fat suit dancing. And I'm like, uh, okay, but then what? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm in a fat suit dancing and, and then I'm going to get praised for that. And it's like, so it would be hilarious if a fat person was dancing mm-hmm. like this. Like this is so, is, to me, this is beautiful. But to yes. some people, it's like, that is so funny because why would you be dancing? Why would you be joyous in, in that way? Mm-hmm. It's just so weird how people go, I don't know why you're sensitive about that. And it's like, right. I'm sensitive about it because it's not particularly funny. There probably is something funny in that. Mm-hmm. But why is it just like, just do whatever but and throw on a fat suit and we'll die laughing. Yeah, it's the dehumanizing part of looking at fat as being somehow that in itself is the joke. Mm-hmm. The body size is the joke. Mm-hmm. And that's really um, the problem. Right. You know, that we are looking at kind of also the body image issue in the gay community. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a reason why everybody in May goes into caloric debt and credit card debt because by June this bitch better be snatched right you know and it's like why are we doing that to ourselves right. why are we doing that to each other and uh it it kind of it's it is a joke but there and there can be other things about it like we could make the funny costume we can make the funny statement sure. but if you're bringing it down to it's funny because this 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 is a fat suit it's not exactly you know there's got to be a reason around it right Right. For, for sure. A hundred percent. I I know that like, uh, you know, uh, live and livid. And I, when I think about that, I think about all the other people that I've known coming up in drag or that I've seen queer people. Um, not a lot of people for the amount of years that you've been doing this have consistently spoken out about the things that bother them. A lot of people just mm-hmm. like shy away from it. What keeps these people, do you think, not speaking up? Is it corporate sponsorship? Is it they just don't care? Uh, because you, you've always been like, I'm going to say what I'm going to say and I'm going to gonna double down on it, which is yeah. something that gives all of us strength i think that's good thank you 100 percent. i think it's um it's the trauma of watching um a community die of aids Mm -hmm. you know and you realize how short and brief like how brief and fragile and um just momentary life is right so you have to you can't just like let things go (laughs) right you can't just like it's like um i just saw i think what uh, when you, if you're like queer and alive and young in the 70s and going out there and like, you know, to be a kid and watch all of these. They were young, all young men at the time. Beautiful. And they, the, the, the community just fall apart from this mysterious disease that nobody in the government was paying attention to. Nobody in the news was really paying attention to until later. Then it was like this thing, this mysterious thing. Well, that's what gay people. Right. That's what happens to gay people. This is punishment from God and all this stuff. And but I think living like kind of growing up through that made me very appreciative of queer voices, queer lives, our lives. Um, it is like, you know, I, I'm like the act up kid still. Right. And I really appreciate the ability to say what I need to say. And um, but it's it's something that I think more people are doing now, much more. And it's really exciting, you know, especially young people. And I love like how things have evolved where um, we're really bringing things into this discourse where we're talking about pronouns and everybody's talking about these ways to make the world more fair. And I I, I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I feel like because I can remember like All American Girl, I can remember all of the shows, I can remember seeing you on covers of magazines, all of these things up until now. I I never feel like there there wasn't Margaret Cho in my life. There's I've always seen consistently somebody living out, living proud, um, encouraging other people. Um, I think it's interesting that because I revere you as a queer icon, um, you're also just an icon in general. And so Um, I remember, I, th- I want to say it was last year, my mom said, oh, I'm going out uh, go- to go see a comedy show. And I was like, oh, cool. She's going with my cousin Debbie, which, by the way, backstory, my mom and her sisters are very far apart in age. So my cousin Debbie, who is her niece, is technically her same age. Uh-huh. This is very spread out. Um, we- this is deep. But however, um, she's like, Debbie's taking me to a comedy show. We're going to go see Margaret Cho. Oh. And I thought to myself, these are two like 
70 something mm-hmm. women who your comedy, your stories relate to them exactly the way they relate to me, who mm. is a, you know, Mexican drag queen from L.A. who has a completely different reference point. But the stories and the observations literally go across the board. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people can say that and do that. What? How do you find that? Like, how do you, are you just, I mean, these, you, do you observe people and you're like, this is just my observation of people in general? I think it's great. I mean, I think it's what it is, is like, um, also the, there are certain things that everybody understands, whether if you're from an immigrant background, if you kind of grew up queer and not understanding, if you got bullied a lot, these things are like really common. So we have all these feelings, even though we're very different necessarily, like like in sort of different social strata, but we're also all the same inside. And the human experience is actually so universal in that way. And I really appreciate that. And age is kind of, it's, it's really just um, a so- societal construct. Right. You know, because we're all going to have the same feelings inside. I think most people in their 80s, 90s and beyond still feel like they're 12 years old. Like, I still feel like I'm 12 years old. Right. And I really relate to um, young people. I'm on TikTok and I relate to young people and I relate to people who are, you know, in their 80s and 90s. I just totally understand. And I, you know, I embrace new technology, old technology. I I'm a gamer. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Okay. But I'm all. But I'm all. I also can read a a, a book made of paper. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 Because you've seen you've seen those things. Yes, yeah. Yes. Um. I I, I want to talk about TikTok, but first let's take a break. Okay. We'll be right back. Coming up, more celeb fashion trends with Margaret Cho and Delta. And we are back. We're here with my extra special guest, my dream guest. Uh, I feel like, as I said, there's you, you've been. A mainstay in my life and in, in entertainment and in queer culture and in, in living out loud and not apologizing and well knowing when to apologize I suppose because you know <laughs> we can all I don't know I find myself sometimes oversharing and- I think oversharing is fine oversharing is fine I mean it's like so yeah yeah <laughs> really yeah. though I feel like that I feel like it's okay to be an, an open book because um and like when I'm at a drag show and I start doing too much, I'm like, I feel like I'm amongst friends and family. If you're here and you came to see what's happening, mm-hmm. you get it. Mm-hmm. I shit mm-hmm. myself in a restaurant. Sorry. Like, Who I, hasn't? It's every... Stop it. You never have. I always shit myself. I I could say I, I mean, I'm, you know why I shit myself? I'm cocky. Okay. I think I can make it to the bathroom. Right. So I'm going to wait. I'm right. going to make it anticipation. Sure. Like I'll make it. I'll, I, I could, and also I want um, I want a good payout. Yes. So I'm going to let it ride. Yes. yes. And I make mistakes. Do you uh, ever find yourself having to use a public toilet? All the time. Yeah. I will use one just because it's there. Do you have like a favorite type of place where you know like this will probably be decent and clean? It, cleanliness is not really a consideration. No. I don't really care. No. Like I do like a Whole Foods bathroom. That's yeah. That's gonna work for me. I like a whole because it's a strong flusher. Mm-hmm. Um, I like any one that you can use your foot to flush. Oh, for sure. You know, like that sort of that thing that like mm-hmm. uh, the lever. Um, I love any kind of toilet in um, something that serves a macrobiotic or vegan. Because mm-hmm. they're going to have a strong right. They're going to know what's what the result is going to be. The plumbing's going to be, um, you know. I have found that the Salt Lake Airport has uh, they've redone their bathrooms, and they remind me of the old Mimi's Cafe bathrooms that had like the little doors where you go in with like frosted glass, and so oh. you're in your own separate thing. It's a little bit European in a way, mm-hmm. whereas like, you know, we I, I always talk about um, when you go to a public restroom and there's those like cracks in the door and it's yeah. like somebody walks by and then you catch their eye and you're so shamed even though you shouldn't be <laughs> but they know that you're there and you know that they're there yeah but yeah like who why can't it just go all the way to the end do you think i don't know maybe it's a construction thing maybe, maybe. it's just an engineering thing to keep the door swinging i thought maybe it was a way to keep people in and out of the bathroom like if you knew that people could see you oh that you would go quickly yeah that's probably true could be right i like that also maybe it would prohibit like drug use like you know how sometimes in some public bathrooms they'll use like that weird blue light where you can't see your veins oh i didn't know that yeah so there's some public bathrooms that have um 
like a like it's like hostile architecture where they have on the streets they'll oh, have benches that have sleeping. yeah for nobody can sleep there nobody can skateboard on it it's got like spikes I hate it. as brutalist um kind of like architecture but really it's just to keep people from sitting there for too long right i hate it yeah i hate it do you um are you a drive through person yes yeah yeah i love a drive through well if you, if you had to pick like a place right now if you were hungry what would be like a go-to el pollo loco really yes. okay what do you like to have there well i like the baja taco that has shrimp in it but that it's seasonal okay. the thing about el pollo loco is that they have the seasonal items that you really really like but you cannot get them sure. all the time and that is very frustrating when you cannot have a tamale mm-hmm. and it's not oh it really, is you know it's very yeah. frustrating so. yeah Del Taco does that. They bring out their um, like right right around like the end of this month or the beginning of next month. They will bring out their uh, their shrimp because they know Lent is coming up. Mm-hmm. And so they'll bring out that and then they'll bring out something else that's, that's like a fish option. And then they'll bring out like a shredded beef thing. And it's like for limited time only. But I don't want it limited. I want it all the time. I want it all the time. Um, I had a real problem with the Jack in the Box drive through which I really liked. And this is in the 90s. One time I was supposed to go meet... Um, the band, the Goo Goo Dolls. Okay. <laughs> at the, the the Cat and Fiddle, which was a which was a bar in Hollywood. Okay. But on my way there, I got waylaid at Jack in the Box, and I had to get everything and eat. And I was so late that they had left by the time I got there. And it, I, but I had spent almost an hour and a half because it was a long line. Also, I had to just check everything that I got it, and then I ate it all, and then I was too full. Right. And then I was like, what do I do? And then I just was like- Shit yourself. Yeah, I should have just shit myself. But it just yeah. I was like waiting for that sort of the- Because I had the burger and like fries, like the fries, spicy fries, and then a taco. The taco over the top. That's what did it. The tacos are questionable. It's hard. Because it's all greasy. Mm-hmm. It is. And the whole thing's fried, but it's soft still. Right. Which there's so many questions. It's got a meat paste. It's out here is hard and chewy, which should be crispy. And then yeah. the middle is just like goo goo doll. Like, it, yeah, who, who I should have just, I should have yeah. met them instead of being with the. Why were you going to meet them? What was happening? Were you doing just it? hanging out? Really? Just dumb, dumb LA shit. Were you like a, are you into their music or they were oh, into I your just, comedy? Yeah, I like their, I like their music a lot. And they, um, this was in the 90s, so they right. were like a really big deal. And uh, David Cross was there, and he saw them, and he was like, what are you guys doing? They're like, oh, we're waiting for Margaret Cho. <laughs> that, and and, this, and this, he's like, what? He's like, oh, okay. And then he sat with them for about an hour, and I still didn't come. I'm, so. st- I'm still I'm still on Jack in the Box because it's one of my favorite places to go. It's so good. But the problem is, is that it's like... Um, it, the breads they use absorb so much of the sort of fake butter <laughs> yes. that it, it's almost like, why don't I just eat the bread? Because the meats are kind of like subpar. Right. It's the breads with the butters inside. Right. And it's not even real butter. Right. Well, what's uniquely American <laughs> about their menu, and specifically their side items, uh, number one, that they introduced the munchie meal, which was dedicated. At one point, it was only available after 11 p.m., and their mm-hmm. whole goal was stoners. Mm-hmm. They were like, these are weird combinations. We want people that are going. And they, they were like under the radar, but above the radar. Like, we know who we're marketing this towards. Right. And then another uniquely American thing is this way that they've, like, this amalgamation of, they have excellent egg rolls. Mm-hmm. They're super, mm-hmm. super, super good. I think they taste good. I don't know how accurate to anybody's recipe they are, but that's what they have. But then they're like, but dip it in ranch, and here's some teriyaki sauce. Oh, so they're yeah. just like, we're going to take from here and here and here and then we're going to call it ours. And mm-hmm. then this is our cuisine. And it's so portable and easy to eat when you're in your car. And uh-huh. then all of the sauces makes it feel like this beautiful culinary experience. Right. I mean, forget Noma. Right. I want Jack in the Box. I mean, so good. But I really have to break down. I am a chef myself now. So I mm-hmm. look, look at all these things and I'm like, why is it so good? It's because they just... Um, put so much effort into the sort of endorphin raising butters and the breads, the fried crispness of certain items, things right. that are fried but are soft. It's just weird. I think 
Um, and it's all, you can, everything has the same taste too because it's all fried in the yes, same oil. It does. It does. And I was kind of mad because they put out this new thing where they put all of their appetizers in one box mm. and they decided, you know what, we're going to throw the churros in there too. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, and I'm like, I personally, I don't want the sweet and the savory together, mm -hmm. maybe in a bar mix or something. But like in that, I wanted it separate, but they're kind of like, we don't care. It's slop and you're going to eat it. Yeah. There's just something. There's a, a bit of a feed bag mentality yeah. when it comes to those kinds of things. But the uh, the oil that everything's fried in has it retains all of the flavors of everything that's been fried in that oil. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't like toss it. They just like sort of, you know, sift through, get they straight <laughs> it and get all the, the um, kind of things that fell off over uh -huh. the years out but it's really um so you're eating the fries of right many many generations oh absolutely do you like a curly fry or a regular french fry there are different aspects to uh why i would like things or where i would like things a curly fry i do love but at the same time it's hard to you know, I love a traditional McDonald's French fry. Mm. You know, to me, uh, they have the best. Those are the yeah. ones that you want to eat out of the bag, like out of the bottom of the bag. Um, the McDonald's fries, I think they're better even than you can make at home. For sure. So I, I really love McDonald's French fry. 100%. Do you dip them in ketchup, ranch dressing? Mayonnaise. Main okay, mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, I have thought about that. Have you had um, QP mayonnaise? I have not had. It's good. Tell it's, me. It's very eggy. I think there's maybe extra egg yolks in it. Okay. And um, I think that's what gives it that really unctuous flavor. Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways, it tastes like um, a homemade mayonnaise, which I, I'm not very good at making. They always break. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I could make it in the blender, but there's something about really satisfying if you can like, actually just whip it up by hand. Right. Um, but I, I don't have like the patience to do that or this arm strength. So, it, But the QP mayonnaise is a good... There's a lot of sugar in it, I think. Okay. Also. Or well, I believe that there is. I don't know if it's on the ingredients, but it's very good. I was introduced to it uh, on TikTok, and I saw somebody go get it from a shelf, and it was like in the bottle in a bag or something. Yeah. Oh, That's Emily Mariko. Pretty. That's pretty to me. Yeah, it's really pretty, and it's really, um, it's got that kawaii, you know, the Japanese cute mm -hmm. kind of marketing. It's like this sort of like beautiful package, and- it's very rich mayo, but I, it was Emily Mariko who does the food videos. Uh -huh. It's like she was making the um, putting ice cube on rice, okay, and putting uh, wax paper over and putting the microwave. It was just very like very viral TikTok. Right, that's pretty to me. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Um, I'm thinking. And see now, I'm thinking about food. I love food. I can talk about food. Um, for I I just. I have a fraught relationship with food because okay. it's something that, like, I just will only think about it. Like, I always, even if I'm not hungry, mm -hmm. I just think about what I'm going to eat next. So, what did you eat this morning? This morning, uh, so right now I am perfecting my mochi recipe. So I okay. bought a mochi machine. Okay. Um, and uh, you, I, I put different kinds of rice in it. So today I did it with Thai sweet rice because I mm. soaked it. And uh, it also Thai sweet rice is very hard to, for me to make because you have to have the big basket right. and stuff. And so um, I found that I could actually make the Thai sweet rice in the mochi maker, but uh, leave out the pounding process, which is actually kind of a great thing. So then I can make that with mangoes when they're in season mm -hmm. and the coconut syrup, which is really beautiful. But this morning I had um, grilled mochi that I had made with the uh, Thai sweet rice and... Um, I had it with a side of um, hazelnut. It's kind of like a health food version of Nutella. Okay. It's hazelnut almond butter and um, a honey crisp apple. Mmm. She was good. real good. And uh, I put some honey on there too. I mean, it. it I uh, love to bake bread. I love to make mochi. I love to make... Um, you know, any manner of food, but I just really, I'm so obsessed with food. I love this. Mm -hmm. I love that you cook all this stuff. Have you always had a passion for cooking? Always, but also like now um, I have a better kitchen. So I have um, 
three different ovens and I have uh, like a lot more leeway. You know, I sort of practiced over the pandemic. I learned to mm-hmm. sous vide um, and I learned so many more things, um, kind of fermentation, how to pickle things and gotten a lot better. Um, I'm still learning how to use my air fryer. So it's a uh, great thing. It's a great tool. Yeah, that's that's all. I, I'm like putting slices of bread in there, and it's I'm all like, you need. oh, look how hard and crispy this is. It's I'm a chef. Need. No, you are a chef. We are all chefs. We, my hands are small, I know, um, but they're my own. That's right. Yeah. Let's take a break. Stay tuned for Remy Delta with Delta and Margaret. First time ever, 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 and I'm so excited, a furry friend on the couch getting very Delta. The one and only Lucia is here. This is um, Lucia Caterina. She is four years old. She's Capricorn. Um, It's your season, baby. She is really sweet. She just got her nails done last night. And um, she's just a really good girl. I think that, you know... She doesn't read a ton. Mm-hmm. I mean, she like there's like one copy of Marley and Me. She she'll chew it. Okay. But she won't read it. Right. And um yeah, she does and she did enjoy um the dogs uh series the limited series on Netflix. Okay. She thought it was really surprising and in depth. What would what do you think her um her buffet choices would be? Her buffet choices would be a uh, chicken vertebra. Okay. Freeze dried. Um, and then to end it with like a chicken neck, maybe a chicken heart. Uh huh. Um, and then uh, cat vomit. Oh, okay. For dessert. Yeah. Yeah. That's her pudding. Why not? Because it's been refined that way. It's already been through that that process. Someone else has already handled all of that. So it's really in its purest form. Yeah. So she does, she loves a little bit of cat vomit, mm, um, which baby. I think uh, is so pretty. She's so pretty. She likes to do a brown smoky eye. Uh huh. I see it. And then it's almost um, a halo. Yeah, it's like a little halo. And then she like likes to have she does like a um uh, like a nude lip, mm-hmm. like my lip but better. I see it, and I also see um a lot a lot of like conditioning on in the hair. Yeah, a lot of um conditioning and a lot of Pilates, so you can see that yeah. rippling muscle tone. It's the it's the diet and it's the dedication. Well, abs are made in the kitchen. Right. So I've you can that. see that. And then she I've has a little ta- tramp stamp tattoo. Oh, my goodness. Man, she's You're a too pretty. sweet, beautiful girl. Um, we have people that send in letters mm-hmm. and they have no idea who's here. So um, would you join me in reading some of these letters? I love it. Okay. Read me, Delta! So um, you can always send uh, a letter to readmedelta at gmail.com if you have pictures or, or any questions. Um, I would say comments as well, but we, we don't want to hear your comments. Because if we open that up, then that means that, you know, you can say whatever you want. And honestly, I don't really want you to say whatever you want because people already do that on the Internet. We don't need it. Yeah. We don't need your comments. Because I already know. I mean, listen, I have a mirror. I I get it. We get it. This first letter. Let's see. Hi, Delta and guest. So this would be hi, Delta and Margaret. Are destination weddings annoying? Are they annoying like a gender reveal or not that bad? (laughs) Why can't people calm down about weddings? And is there such a thing as a cool wedding if it's still a wedding? Uh, I'd also like people to stop being so entitled about being sensitive when anyone even suggests weddings and babies are for people who don't want to answer bigger, more difficult questions that obviously have no answers. I love you, mothers. Very Dominique. Ooh. Hmm. Uh, Have you been to a a destination wedding and is it annoying? I've never been to a destination wedding. I mean, Mm -hmm. other than maybe... San Diego. Okay. And that was far enough. I yeah. mean, I don't really like weddings anyway, just because it's just so like, I mean, I love, I love a gay wedding, Uh huh. but, um, a straight wedding. I'm like, Oh, sick. I don't like, like it. Ew. It's like, don't shove your sexuality in my face. Right. I don't need, Stop I don't, grooming me. Yeah. You're grooming me. I don't care what you do in the bedroom. Right. I don't, I just don't need to hear about right. it. Right. <laughs> what is it? Let's agree to disagree on this wedding. <laughs> Uh, gross. Yeah. Gross. Well, I don't like anything that involves people assuming that I need to get in debt with them. (laughs) I know. I know. I want you to buy a ticket to Hawaii and I want you to take off five days and you're going to come to my wedding and you're going to buy me a present and you're going to buy a whole wardrobe Mm -hmm. and that's how you're going to love me. Yeah. How dare you? uh, No. Sick. I don't see it. It's disgusting. But what about a gender? Is it as gross as a gender reveal? 
It's gross in a different way. I see, that's exactly how I would have said that. Mm-hmm. It is. It's gross in a different way. A gender reveal is just like who cares? You know what it is? It's obnoxious and rude, but it's like the gender reveal is like foul. The gender reveal is so like who are you to decide? Right. What this child is? Right. You have not even given this child a voice. Right. Or an idea of like who it would want to be or who they want to be. You know, it's rude. I kind of feel like in this day and age too, like, uh, like maybe piercing like a baby's ears or something. It's like, why aren't you piercing their nipples then? Like, why aren't you piercing their lip? It's like, a why violation. Are you just... Yeah. It's just like, what the... F- <laughs> I'm actually, I don't have my ears pierced. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to have my ears pierced. Do you have your ears pierced? I have my pierced? ears pierced so much that it's really upsetting. And really? it just smells like Parmesan cheese. Like no. I, I, it just makes your ear smell. You can spend oh as much as you want. You could clean your ear as much. You, the more pierces you get, the more you smell like a, a Parmesan, a Reggiano. Okay. A Romano. Okay. A, a hard cheese. I saw um, one of those like, uh, to- I think it was Top, no, it wasn't Top Chef. Maybe it was Top, with Padma Lakshmi. Yeah. Is that Top Chef? Yeah. And, um, but it wasn't her. She's just the person I remember. But the person was doing a, um, a French onion soup. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the guests or the judges were eating it. They were like, mm, yeah, I taste this. I taste that. I definitely love the wouton in the bottom. <laughs> and I was like, wow, okay. Ooh. Like you didn't have to like drop that in there. <laughs> like it's very, the wouton. So I'm thinking like ears that are cr- like crunchy. Crunchy. And parmesan Like it got a rind. Mm-hmm. And it's it stinky. Might, and it might, but it might have a little like, to it. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, destination weddings grow. Look, this came. This letter came in a bag. Cute. Um, thank you, Mark, for that. In a bag, I forgot my letter opener, so I'm using this lip uh, brush, which is really how they all do. All the network people do that. That's how they do it. Yeah, I'm I'm climbing, and so I just figure, you know, if you do what they do, mm-hmm. you'll make it. That's what I hear. All right, next letter. Dear Delta and attractive guest, what a, that's a, that's an interesting way to like if they didn't know who was here to say just attractive or that's what nice. about like, that's but that nice. seems very like dear nice person. It's nice. Ha, hello, hello, cor- cordial being. <laughs> it seems like that. Is Sunday fun day really a thing? Are people seriously having Sunday as their fun day? <laughs> Do they really wear shirts that say Sunday fun day? I feel like Sunday being my fun day is out of my grasp. Mm. What is a fun day? Is a fun day gay? How can I have an actual Sunday fun day? Thank you so much. Yours truly and and sincerely, very Jeremy. What is Sunday fun day? That sounds straight. Well, it's very straight. I don't know. Usually Sunday, I mean, probably with you two, we're flying. Right. Because we're getting back after a Saturday night show. Right. So it's almost never... uh, a, a free day, really, because it's a travel day, which are always, I think, work days. Mm-hmm. You know, I would count that along with the, you know, it is absolutely a work day because you have to get up with the crack of whatever and get on a flight, right. which is work day for us. So I don't, I've never experienced a Sunday fun day. Um, I could say every day is a fun day. You can make every day a fun day. Even a work day can be a fun day. Would you wear a shirt that said Sunday fun day? Um. Only if it had semen stains on it. Right, right. I was thinking I would prefer to wear a shirt that said, like, wine mom. <laughs> that would be for me. That It would, you know, uh, it, it's 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 wine o'clock somewhere. Right, right. I, you know, what's weird is that, like, when people, I'm sure that for years they, they are like, because you're a comic and because you've worked nightlife and because you've worked all over the place, there are still people that... Um, Maybe are not necessarily super close to you, but like uh, other people that are like, let's go out sometime. We should go to the club sometime. We should go. And they want to go in places where there's like lots of people or people doing what it is that you do professionally. Yeah. And a lot of times it's like, that's where I don't want to go. Yeah. I wouldn't go. Yeah. I I mean, that's where I wouldn't. I mean, to me, it's like, let's go to your workplace. Right. Right. (laughs) Right. And, you know, in, in, in certain situations, it's like, okay, well, this makes sense for me to go because I'm going to support some specific thing. Yeah. If I want to see somebody. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I don't, I, like I say, you're the reason I say your close people would know better than that because they know you better than that. And they know that like your quiet time cooking or, or just hanging out or, or, 
essentially just not being around a bunch of people. Is like well, so I, I think I have social anxiety. So I, I that's why I like cooking so that I don't have to talk to anybody. And the more uh, difficult and convoluted the recipe, a thing that, the food that I'm making, mm-hmm. I don't have to talk to a single person. Sure. So sure. that's great. Like anytime I go to a party, I end up making the food. Mm-hmm. I end up going in and helping the staff, their staff in the kitchen. I love this. And, you know, I love whatever. that. Would you, if you were at a restaurant and you were just not getting a refill, would you just like kind of sit it out or would you be the person to get up and be like, I'm just going to go get my refill? Probably go go, go get you it. Go I mean, get I, it. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, I wouldn't feel weird about it. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, also when you work in restaurants, cause I, I worked in restaurants when I was really young. So that kind of thing. It's so normal. Do you eat at a buffet? I would love to, but I would now na- not because of co only because of COVID. But I love a buffet. Really? I love, especially an Asian seafood buffet. Mm. You know where they have just everything, and then all of the crowds of Asian families coming at waiting outside at four fifty nine for mm-hmm. the doors to open. Yeah, you know I love anything like that, but uh, I have not been since the pandemic which is like i don't know i don't know if i would return to it uh anytime soon but that i do love it well see i was raised eating tamales out of trunks so mm. i'm not i mean literally out of car trunks and people's like men's trunks mm-hmm. so i'm not afraid i'm built like like i'm, I'm steel inside right so um I, I i've been like th- throughout the pandemic i was like please let me know when something opens and then i found places and i live in the city of norwalk which is like the long beachy cerritos mm-hmm. just like it's like kind of an armpit that connects la county and orange county mm-hmm. and so that's where i live and there's tons of buffets like that and there's a place called east buffet mm. and there is something with a an asian buffet and Hispanic people Mm -hmm. that I don't I don't know what it is but I mean we are there yeah we are there and so if you go I I always feel like if I go by and I'm like it's about 50% Asian and 50% Mexican I'm good it's gonna be good it's gonna be good like someplace like Vegas Vegas seafood Uh uh-huh by the 101 yeah so good if there's like um like for some reason randomly like Mama Celeste pizza sitting in there I'm like it's going to be right. It's going to be so delicious. I mean, there's just so many, and there's so many options, mm-hmm. and they always have pudding. Why? It's so good. It's there, but why? Be- because that's sometimes you can't stomach another dessert, mm-hmm. but you could have some pudding. Well, you know, sometimes I feel like buffets try to boast, uh, like in Vegas especially, mm-hmm. they try to boast like, oh my gosh, our desserts are right. And I'm like, they all taste kind of the same. Mm-hmm. I want. Let me know where the meat is. I want the meat and I want a good salad bar. Oh, it's so good. I need a salad bar that has like um, chopped eggs. Oh, yeah. I need that. I need. A, I love it. Not because it's so healthy. I mean, no, I, you know, people delicious. are like, oh, are you just having a salad? I'm like, no. Well, you need to see the kind of salad I'm having. It's so good. Yeah. I love real bacon bits. Mm. I love all of the. Uh, you know, what's really good is if you actually work and um, you do comedy at a casino for an extended period. So you're not like a headlining act, but you're like kind of one of the supporting acts. But the club will book you for like a couple weeks then you do five shows a day and you get a card to get into the employee cafeteria oh and that is um it's like the outlet mall of all of the buffets in the hotel so you have a you know you're getting the um uneaten portions of everything that was not eaten that day from like five so you basically have five buffets and it's all in one it's all in one everything's it's a just eat what you eat all you want all day and you're doing shows so you're only working at night i mean you have to do five shows so that's a lot yeah but you only start like the late late afternoon but you get to eat in between shows and it's really fun i like that i love it well if you were to go pick a plate at a buffet just the the, the, the buffet of your dreams what would be on the first plate? Um, definitely macaroni and cheese because I love a macaroni and cheese with a really big macaroni that's only really, you only really get that at like a big buffet like that. Some kind of pizza or like a llama june, you know, the um, Lebanese pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also love um, any kind of a Salisbury steak. I like that. I love that. Um, I would love, uh, you know, a salad with uh, pepperoncini and those like pickled beets and pick all the pickled vegetables mm-hmm. and um, 
big cubes of like this chef salad cheese and salami. Oh, this is so good. It's so good. This is so good. Actually, again, uh, East Buffet, good. But something new that just came into our area is a place called Demasi's, which is based out of Texas. But their first location is now in Cerritos, which full circle is in an old Mimi's Cafe. Ooh. And it is a Mediterranean buffet. <gasps> And it's <gasps> sickening. And I go there like at least once a week. And it's so correct. And it's like 20 bucks. And that includes your beverage. And they have mm. everything, including rose water. You have to go sometimes. Oh, that's it's so beautiful. Right. It's so right. It's that's so correct. That's beautiful. Yeah. And it's right off the freeway. So you, And there's a Ross near there. You're not, probably not a Ross person, but I am. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You might be. You probably just don't know yet. Yeah, I don't know. You could get something like this at Ross. I mm-hmm. like it. I'm a home goods. Oh, I'm home like goods a home fun. goods and like a I'm more of a home goods and more of a Nordstrom rack. I like Nordstrom rack because they do sell um, high heels in size 11. So oh, that's good, good. good. Well, they carry them up to 13, but those are for the buffoons. <laughs> <Not me. laughs> um, This was fun. I so fun. This blows by so fast. I feel like this is like truly my dream. Thank you so oh, much for being you. here. This is so like. It's interesting because, like I said, we do have friends in common. Um, of course, Monistat, mm-hmm. who is so very, very important to me, and of course, is your drag daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, when I know people who are like, "Oh my gosh, you would love Margaret. She's yeah. so easy." In fact, Raja just the other day was like, "I'm so jealous that Margaret's going to be there." I'm like, "I know Margaret needed to be on very that first. Like, I know there were so many things that I wanted to say on it's very that, but we'll do that later. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Good. I mean, this is it, right? Thank you all so much for listening to Very Delta. As you know, if you search for Very Delta on TikTok or on Instagram, you can get dedicated socials. Um, the show comes out every Monday, and we want you to subscribe so that you do not miss an episode and a special hello to everyone watching the talk show on youtube also you know what's very delta subscribing to mom podcast so you don't miss an episode you can send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com you can follow me on instagram at delta work that's kind of like my only platform um and of course your show launches february 16th mm-hmm. live and livid that's right and it's just going to be everywhere. Yes. It's going to be sickening. So sickening. And we're going to be so yeah. mad. You're going to be so mad. It's going to be so sickening. Living. I am livid. We're going to be gagging on the lividity. The gagnation. <laughs> Gagnesha Katura. Gagnesha Katura. <laughs> um, and so anyway, join me next week right here. And until then, keep things very Delta. Coming up next week, bitch, she's Venus Delight. Venus D. Light joins Delta. We were the drag guinea pigs. Yeah. We were the test subjects. Um, I mean, me and Venus, what's... you know, people, they know us from seeing us on the casting special. And mm-hmm. we were literally the first two people at the casting special parked in the parking lot in full drag because we were told, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know who's spilling this or who's hearing it, but we were already cast on the show. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. <laughs>